Hey guys, John here. In this video, we're gonna cover all the new features added in Avenger 2.1.0. And with this new update, we now have an oscillator harmonizer, four new effects modules, which are a vowel filter, a wah-wah, a peak compressor, and a peak limiter. The stereo matrix effects module now has more parameters. And in the oscillator quarter preset menu, we can now mute the main voice. And the preset browser now previews presets in your project's BPM with an added volume control. So let's dive in and go over this update in more detail. So first up, we have the oscillator harmonizer. Now to navigate to it, we first need to select the voicing tab and go over here to the harmonizer tab. Now this module harmonizes notes depending on the chords that we play. So for example, if we played a C major chord with our left hand, then we played notes with our right hand, those additional notes will be harmonized with additional voices. Now the harmonizer module gives us access of up to four different voices that we can choose from. So let's first turn the harmonizer module on as well as the first voice. For each voice, we have a power button, an interval selector, tuning, plus and minus 100 cents, panning, and a volume control. Now these five parameters can all be modulated, which is really cool. Now the options inside the interval selector range from negative four to positive four. So what does this mean exactly? So let's go back to our C major chord example. A C major chord consists of the notes C, E, and G. If we were to play that chord with our left hand and set the intervals to plus one, and then we play a C note with our right hand, what will actually happen is that plus one parameter will play the next interval in the C major chord. So in this case, we will hear a C and an E together. So let's try that out. So let's first bring this interval to positive one and with our left hand, let's play a C major chord. So C, E, and G, as you can see down over here, and let's play a C note with our right hand. So that's playing a C and an E together. It would be the same if we did this. Now let's say we select this first one and go to a positive two and do the same thing. So in this case, the result is gonna be a C and a G together. Same thing like this. Underneath the trigger menu, by default, we have MIDI and trigger, and we can also select any of the eight art modules. And down here at the bottom, we have an option called mute main voice. So let's turn this on real quick. And basically what this does, if this is on and we play a C major chord with our left hand and play a C note with our right hand, and the interval selector would be at two positive one, for example, we would only hear the E above that C that we played with our right hand. If we were to turn on the next voice and set that to plus two, now we would hear the E and the G above the C that we played with our right hand. So let's try that out real quick. The way we can tell that this option is enabled is if we have this black dot here on the left hand side. So now this is on, let's bring our first voice to a positive one and let's play a C chord and then a C with our right hand. Now we're actually listening to an E. If we were to turn this off, that's actually a C and then we turn this back on, play a C chord and do the same thing. Now we hear an E. Now if we turn the second guy on and bring this up to a positive two and do the same thing, here we're hearing an E and a G together. To the right of the trigger menu, it will display the chord that we're currently playing as long as the notes are in the active chord keyboard zone. So if I were to play a C major chord, we can see that it says C major right over here. Now this keyboard down here below the trigger and the chord, if we select this, we have this vertical red line here. And here's where we can determine the chords that we play with our left hand and the notes that we play with our right hand. And if we wanna change that, we can just drag the slider to the left or to the right how we'd like to. And finally, at the very top of the harmonizer, we have a drop down menu of a lot of cool different presets to check out. Okay, so from an init patch, let's go ahead and check out one of these harmonizer presets. So remember, we go to voicing and then we go to harmonizer. Let's turn this on, select the drop down menu, and this is going to be one of my personal favorites the smooth chorus. Let's select this guy. Let's play a C major chord and press a note. So it's gonna sound like this. Now to really make this shine, let's go back to VSAW, increase the mix all the way here for unison. Let's go seven voices, maybe a little bit of detune, and let's add some delay, and let's add a little bit of a root of verb and increase the release on our amp. And let's see what that sounds like. Not so bad.
So we have four brand new effect modules inside Avenger, and the first one I wanna talk about is the vowel filter. Now with this module, we can make some really cool sounding formant patches. So from an init preset, let's increase our mix all the way here to the top, and let's add seven voices. And over here on our first effect stack, let's right click under modulation, let's go to vowel filter, and let's take a listen to that. Now, if we add some attack here and a little bit of release, let's give this a little bit of a different curve and let's right click here and add some root of verb to really spice things up. So from here, we can dial back the mix just a little bit to let the original signal through. Now we can select different vowels here. So we have vowel one, two, three, four, and five. And by default, we have A, E, I, O, and U. Now, if you select here, we have a different choices to pick from. And on the right-hand side, we can actually shift these as well. And down here at the bottom, we can add some extra brightness if we'd like to. And what's really cool is this knob over here that's called fader. So with this knob, we can fade between the different vowels. So let's take a listen to that. Definitely make sure to modulate that knob. That's a lot of fun. So down here at the bottom, we have outgain. Now this knob is actually very important because it's very easy to clip once we're making these type of resonant formant patches. So keep that knob handy. So next up, we have the wah-wah. Now let's load this up on just a saw wave. Let's right click our effect stack and under modulation, it's gonna be right over here. Now at the very top, we have a couple different modes. The first one is auto, we also have pedal, and then we also have mod. So let's first take a look at pedal as that's the simplest one to wrap our brains around. The first knob we see here is pedal, and if we hold down a note and move the knob, we hear a filter with high resonance opening up. Now this could be a cool control to put on a mod wheel, so let's drag and drop the mod wheel over here to pedal, and let's give this full influence, something like that, so now our mod wheel will control this knob. And if we ever want more resonance for this sound, we can always increase the resonance via the resonance slider down over here. So next up we have LR phase. Now this knob is really interesting because this works together with the pedal control. So let's set this LR phase all the way to its maximum value at 180. Now when the pedal control is at its minimum value, the open filter is gonna be in our right speaker and the closed filter is gonna be in the left speaker. And as we increase the pedal control, we'll notice how this effect inverses itself. And down here at the bottom, we have a min and max bar, and this is where we set the minimum and maximum frequency for the filter. And below this, we have a high pass filter, we have an in gain and an out gain, and then a mix knob that we can use to blend the original signal with the wah wah. So now let's check out the mod mode. Let's select here at the top and let's go down over here to mod. So here we can sync up the pedal modulation to an internal LFO in Hertz if we'd like. Or we can sync this up to our DAW. And the modulation depth can be changed to be this depth control up here on the top right. And by default, this is gonna be on plus 40. However, if that's too strong, we can always dial it back to where we like it. And keep in mind, if our depth is set to zero, we're not gonna hear any modulation. And we can also go into negative territory if we'd like. So below the depth control, we see the trigger parameter. And here we can tell the internal LFO when to trigger its cycle. We can set it to free, meaning that the LFO is always running and does not re-trigger. We basically hop on the LFO wherever it happens to be in its cycle. 
We can re-trigger it when the host starts playback if we select host. And finally, we have first note. And here the LFO will restart its cycle on the first note that we press. And where that LFO restarts can be adjusted via the offset knob over here on the left-hand side. Let's take a quick look at auto mode. So under the mode menu, let's select this here and go to auto. So remember in pedal mode, we modulate the pedal ourselves however we want. In mod mode, we have an internal LFO and in auto, this will be automatic. And in this mode, we have two added controls. We have tracking and we have a sensitivity. And also keep in mind that we have lots of different presets to go through in case that's something that you're interested in trying. So next up, we have the new peak compressor and the new peak limiter. Now, the difference of peak compressors and peak limiters is that they respond to the peaks of a signal as opposed to the RMS of a signal. This will be more appropriate to use on transient heavy signals, but feel free to experiment on different types of signals and see the results that you come up with. The peak compressor is particularly nice to put on drums, and the peak limiter can be very helpful on an overall mix to catch all those fast transients. So let's load up the peak compressor and the peak limiter. So let's right click on our effect slot here and under dynamic, we have the peak compressor and let's click here again. And also in the dynamic, we have the peak limiter. Now keep in mind, there's lots of interesting presets to go through here. So on the peak compressor, we have a lot of stuff with drums here. And on the peak limiter, we have stuff to do with the master mix and also drum limiting as well. So here we have our typical controls, such as the threshold here at the top. And below that, we have our input gain, our ratio, our attack and release. We have makeup gain and also a knee, which is really nice in case we want a more gradual compression curve or a soft knee, as they say. Now, down here at the bottom, we have our gain reduction meter and we have our output gain and also our mix knob in case we want some parallel compression. The peak limiter has fewer controls. So here we have the threshold at the top. We have input gain. We have release, our gain reduction meter, and also our output gain. In the oscillator quarter section, we can now mute the main voice and only have the quarter voices play. So what we can do is you go to the voicing tab and over here, let's say we have our saw wave and we wanna add an octave saw wave above that. So we turn this on and we increase this to 12. Now, if we wanna just listen to this octave up, we click this menu up here at the top and then select mute main voice. And there you go. So now in the preset browser at the top, we have a BPM button and we have a volume slider. So this BPM button is going to enable the preview of the different presets in our own project's BPM. So for example, let's go to our factory two library under ARPS, let's select this absolute long sequence, but first let's turn this off to see what it sounds like before. And I'm in a much slower tempo at 80, so if I turn this on and now listen, It gives us a much better idea of what this preset would sound like in our own track. And now we have a volume slider in case this is a little bit too loud for us. All right, guys, that's it for now. Hope you have a lot of fun using the new features in VPS Avenger 2.1.0. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you next time.